wrote as a note to the students, to a student who completed her 10th standard this year. And he's written, like the gymnastics event in the Olympics, the judges never gave you a perfect 10, though in private, they will all admit that you deserved it. I would like to believe that you scored 100 in all your subjects. When we were in school, the only thing that went up to this level was our temperature when we fell sick. And we never really even remotely came any more close to this level of performance. I want to share with you that all of us in the previous generation did not have the life handed to us on a silver platter. We had our share of challenges, difficulties, and multiple obstacles, but still did everything that was needed for our children to have an optimal opportunity to pursue their dreams and fulfill their aspirations. Parents are happiest when their children excel and surpass them in their goals and objectives. Our life is not all about academic brilliance and does not amount to much qualitatively. If this knowledge and learning cannot be used to give back to the world a little more than what you take from it, you must be a net contributor to the world. As Swami Dayananda says, if you want to bring about a qualitative change within yourself, your family, your community, and the world around you. There's no doubt that he was more than a net contributor. And I dedicate Aishman 2020 in his memory. And I pray to Bhagawan that Akka, our family, get, get strength to overcome this, all of us to overcome this and continue his legacy. Thank you and welcome you all. Dr. Swami, can you say a few words? Uh, namaste and uh, with humble pranams at the feet of Lord Dhanvantri, we would like to pray to Lord Dhanvantri that uh, Vijay Kumar Ji's soul attain peace and heaven because uh, it was really shocking to me before his death uh, this last uh, before day night, 10 o'clock, I had a discussion with him on how to conserve medicinal plants. And we were supposed to have a meeting on the day of uh, the day he had his uh, this Sharnagati. In fact, uh, it was really shocking for all of us. But as he said in our meeting that the mission should continue and uh, with all the prayers we would like to carry forward the unfulfilled dreams of uh, Vijay Kumar Ji as well as our mentor Krishna Kumar Ji whom we recently also lost where they only visualized about globalizing Ayurveda Disregarding their individual aspirations, individual gains, they committed their life for the cause of Ayurveda. And I hope with this spirit, we go forward with this effort. And uh, I'm very thankful for to Hariji, the Vijayalakshmi ma'am, who took this initiative and all the team at Center for Soft Power. And we hope we would fulfill their dreams and aspirations. Thank you. So, uh, Aparna, shall we start? The... Yeah, yes, Omarji, we will, uh, yes. if you can briefly introduce uh, Dr. Padmaji. Yes. Yeah, so, in you. fact, uh, Dr. Padma Subramaniam is uh, more than uh, a celebrity for our organization. As we all know, uh, it was his Ani, you know, always when he 
she came to our institution she was like our elder sister mother for us and we had served her so many years and uh, so rather you know she's a unique blend of uh, academician an artist a researcher an indologist and uh, she's a institution in herself um whenever she comes to our institution or in various forums she has been talking about indian culture indian art uh right from her teenage days as we all know she was first into uh, classical music singing and then finally uh one of the most exponential artist of india ever produced so padma ji for us is like an icon and though several accolades nationally and internationally she has got uh, being padma shri or padma vibhushan in 2003 also sangeet natak academy award in 1983 being one of the few uh, laurels being given by government of india in recognition to her contribution which she has put to this whole uh, indian art and culture she is also awarded with nehru award in 1983 by soviet union and also uh, fukuoka asian cultural prize from japan for her contribution to develop and uh, indian culture and harmony in asia so in fact i should uh, not uh stress upon telling how great she is uh, but uh, the biggest uh example of how she great is in spite of her all accolades and uh, her achievements she is very down to earth very social very mother like for all of us so i invite uh, dr padma subramaniam to give an introductory remark uh, on this auspicious occasion and all, at the same time we would like to also invoke uh, krishna kumar ji's memory before we start her address ma'am you can start please yes unmute please ma'am you hear me we can hear you ma'am yes well it's a unique uh, and a very strange situation this is called celebrating ayurveda as we are celebrating we are also condoling the sudden demise of our dear jay kumar and i would first like to convey my heartfelt condolences to my very dear friend viji and her daughter and son it was viji who called me a few days ago and said i have to be someone like a guest for this uh, unique meet of experts of ayurveda indic academy has been doing extraordinary work and uh, through indic academy a lot of uh, common self esteem has been created and it is still being created i am very happy 
that the center for soft power is gaining extraordinary power through ayurveda ayurveda has been something which has really kept the uh, the well being of a whole society of not only uh, people of india but uh, i would say southeast asia for several thousands of years and uh, i would like to pay my respects to all of you experts doctors in ayurveda my humble greetings bhagavad gita teaches us to have some equanimity when there is a calamity so we are celebrating somebody is gone we miss we miss vijay kumar we miss krishna kumar krishna kumar has been like my younger brother for almost four decades and uh, we all know that ayurveda is um, a upaveda of atharva veda it is called veda because there can be no compromise this is what kanchi mahaswami says when you call it veda you cannot have compromise whereas artha shastra is also a upaveda of atharva veda it is still called shastra and not veda we don't call it call it artha veda we call it artha shastra because when it is question of politics there has to be some compromises in ayurveda you cannot have compromise because you de- you actually um, deal with the life of people and it is not only uh, to cure cure somebody from disease it is also for the well being of somebody and i am an example i am i am truly an example because though i went to um avp coimbatore almost 40 years ago just after an accident i i had uh, developed spondylosis they not only cured me but they saw to it that i have a good life so ayurveda is something which is for the well being of people and as i said i talk with experience personal experience and i am very happy that uh, dr krishna kumar took ayurveda to who and the present generation of uh, doctors have really been great work great service to make ayurveda something um, known to the whole world it is already very popular i can say that because as i travel every country seems to know about ayurveda it's a very positive thing and there on a lighter vein i can say i have been like a big notice walking big notice for ayurveda and uh, i think that uh, dr sukumar was somebody who could be is a problem with the audio 
Pana? Yeah, we lost you for a minute, Taka. Um, I don't know from where you. Yeah, now now it's fine. Well, I was talking about how Ayurveda was taken by. I think again, there's a Nishu. So, yeah, it's, it's. Is it better now? Yes, sir. Is it better? Yes, sir. Ah. Uh, I have I have experienced that uh, Ayurveda is gaining popularity in various countries. Wherever I go, people want to buy something herbal, including cosmetics. They prefer to buy something which is herbal. And there is a great future for Ayurveda. I remember our Prime Minister had um, formulated a committee with our uh, Dr. Krishna Kumar as chairman to find uh, a remedy for Corona. And uh, it's a pity he didn't live to see it. But I know something has been found. And I say this again with uh, some self-experience. My 14-year-old student had Corona and not only she, her whole family of about four or five people were all cured only through Ayurvedic medicines. This is in Chennai. And I was so proud that uh, AVP had taken up uh, a whole ward in Chennai in a government hospital. And they were taking care of many corona patients. And this is the efficacy of Ayurveda. And we, I bow to all the Ayurveda doctors and for the research that is being continued by the younger generation. And I'm sure it's going to be a great success. And I'm praying that even this particular uh, meeting that you're having is going to be something very meaningful, taking Ayurveda forward. Um, I would like to wish all of you a happy Diwali. I know this is uh, it's a very embarrassing situation. Um, as Dr. Saumit rightly said, whether it is celebration or uh, condolence, we will fall at the feet of Bhagwan Danvantri. We'll fall at the feet of Bhagwan Krishna, who gave us Bhagavad Gita to take Dukkha and Sukha in the same stride. But as uh, even in uh, British system, they say, the king it is dead, long live the king. So life has to go on. And if life has to go on in the right way with well-being, it is Ayurveda which can help us. Because we have seen how Alapati gives us an antibiotic to remove headache. They give a medicine, it creates stomach pain. It's only Ayurveda which, which can look at the entire physique in a holistic way. Like how we do in dance. You can't say any one Anga is important and, and the other ang Angas are not so important. You take care of the entire well-being of the, I would even say, not only physical, but it helps intellectual growth, emotional well-being, equanimity, and it gives a spiritual character to the entire way of treatment. My best wishes for this conference. Namaskar. Thank you so much. So, it's really. Varsha? Uh, yeah.
Namaste all. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Padma, for those very warm and insightful words. We're very glad you could be a part of our celebrations today. We will now move on to the launch of our exhibition. We call it Dravya Pradarshana. And through this exhibition, we have tried to bring out the significance of many different medicinal plants, which includes its properties, uses, and a very fun fact about each one of them. This uh, exhibition was co-curated by Dr. Rupa Vasudevan, uh, who's the chancellor of uh, Best University, and Dr. Nimin Shridhar, managing director of Eka Vaidya All Its Services. We have showcased them on Kunst Matrix, an online platform. The link to the exhibition is on our Center for Software website. We will also share the link in the chat box. So please kindly have a look and spread the word about it. So I'll just take you on a very quick tour of the gallery. Uh, just give me a few seconds to share my screen. Thank you. So this is our exhibition. You can either take a guided tour or you can walk through it manually. We have an introductory poster. So I will enter the exhibition and show it to you manually right now. So we have an introductory poster that tells you what the gallery is about. We have incorporated plants such as neem, ashwagandha, aloe vera, pepper, and many, many more. As of today, there are around 50 in the gallery. So uh, we will be adding more by the end of tomorrow. So please do come back and have a look. I'll uh, just take you on a quick tour. So this is how each one of our posters look like. You can zoom into it. So we have the scientific name, the common names of the plant with its Ayurvedic properties and its uses and a fun do you did you know fact. So you can manually go through the entire gallery. So please do come back and have a look at this. We have a quiz on 6th of September, where a few questions will be based on this display. Um, so we are running a very tight schedule today. So I will conclude the tour here and hand the session over to Aparna. Thank you and namaste. Thank you so much, uh, Varsha. We now go on to our uh, panel discussion. Uh, we have our chair, uh, respected Dr. Uh, Ram Kumar. He is an uh, alumnus of the Ayurveda College Coimbatore and grandson of Arya Vaidyan PV Rama Warrior, the founder of the AVP group of institutions in Coimbatore. He is currently the director and trustee on the board of different institutions under the AVP umbrella. He is the founder director of Vaidyagrama, which attempts to cater to the demand of authentic Ayurveda, the traditional way, as well as uh, they have been following a very modern trajectory too. He will be chairing the session and we have with us uh, an esteemed panel. We have Dr. Sandris Petronas. He is an orthopedic surgeon. We have Ms. Margaret Mota. She is a neurologist and Ayurveda therapist and director, producer and screenwriter of the documentary Ayurveda, A Possible Cure. We have Dr. Jeevan E.P. He is a, a graduate of Bharatiya University and is one of Germany's most qualified and experienced practitioners in the field of Ayurveda. We have Dr. Lucia. She's a doctor in cardiology and has traveled to in India to perfect her Ayurveda practice at AVP. And we have in a video clip from uh, Dr. Rama Prasad and uh, who has studied Ayurveda and yoga for about eight years at Coimbatore. We have Professor Eric Schultz. He's a professor of Ayurveda at the uh, Naraveda Shala Institute and uh, Latin American School of Ayurveda. Uh, their profiles are uh, there on our uh, website and uh, from the center of soft power and at AVP, we welcome all of them. Uh, Dr. Ramkumar, over to you. So, uh, Aparna, uh, uh, Dr. Yes. Ramkumar will uh, join us very shortly. Uh, he's uh, in a, a conference which he's just getting uh, free from uh, so but then 
uh, on behalf of uh, Dr. Ram Kumar Ji. Uh, I would like to start the session and then uh, he will take over. So it's a indeed a very uh, encouraging start for Ayurveda Day today with announcement of uh, Dr. Tedros, who is the uh, the chief of WHO, announcing uh, a first ever uh, center for advanced uh, studies, research, and the center for traditional medicine uh, in India. And uh, just in the morning in conference with the Prime Minister of India, uh, he announced this uh, welcome uh, news. And uh, it is indeed uh, very evident that the whole world is embracing uh, the the whole message of Ayurveda and taking Ayurveda more seriously and the growing popularity of Ayurveda is not just based on our thought process which is embedded in our traditional uh, Aithikyas what we say or, or in the belief system but rather it is slowly transforming into more and more practice-based evidence or evidence-based practice, as you want to say. So today's uh, the gallery of uh, resources uh, who is going to join us represent a, a ideal balance between what is the future of Ayurveda? What is the scope of Ayurveda? What are the opportunities of Ayurveda uh, globally? And we have tried to uh, today invite uh, the exponents of Ayurveda uh, delivering, propagating, or researching uh, the application of Ayurveda as a science in every quarters of the world. So this journey of these scholars, these researchers, these practitioners had some route to vision of AVP, Ayurveda Pharmacy, as well as its sister institutions. Uh, and most of them had been a messenger of the vision of Krishnamarji, what uh, he had envisaged when he, along with his father, uh, founded this institution. So I would like to take forward uh, our discussion with uh, first uh, with uh, Dr. Jeevan, who had been uh, our esteemed student from Ayurveda College, Coimbatore. And it was a unique experiment by Krishna Kumarji where he implemented a Gurukula system of education in modern uh, medical education or Ayurvedic education, which was extremely successful. And he's one of the exponents who passed out uh, from that uh, coveted batches in the first few years of going to Ayurveda College. So I would like to start uh, the session with his uh, views on what are the differences in perception of Ayurveda in India and overseas, Dr. Jeevan. And he is basically uh, representing from uh, Germany. Uh, over to you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Somit Kumar, uh, because I, first of all, I will tell pranams to Dr. Krishna Kumarji, and because uh, without him, because I never reached into this particular situation with the Ayurveda, because I remember that in 1989, when I finished my seven and a half years of Ayurveda course, because he only told about that there should be a course, introductory course for Ayurveda for the Western uh, people. And uh, thanks to him that I got a chance to teach Ayurveda for the Westerners. And after five years of uh, experience, 
in this uh, teaching and also in the college as a lecturer. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So after five years of experience of teaching uh, in the uh, college and also for the Westerners, uh, I slowly moved to Italy and also to uh, Germany. In the last 25 years, I am now living in Germany. Okay. So it is a fight because uh, usually you know that when you say Ayurveda in the old time, it was always uh, <laughs> told as aloe vera because people don't know that what is that Ayurveda. But now you can see that in Germany, it is uh, in Europe, I think that it is one of the places where it is really, really far uh, uh, yeah, uh, better in a different ways because we have academies, we have research programs and uh, some of the diseases like uh, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson and everything is also done as a research by the Ayush programs and all. And also in Austria and all, you can see that in the Graz University and all medical universities, because the first one semester for medical students are also coming up with the Ayush uh, ministry. So it is, in one way, it is uh, really improving. But the problem what we face in Germany is, uh, one is the preparations. Because in India, what I want to say uh, that, because people are always interested to promote or export the medicines. And I don't think so that that's a good idea because we have to promote the technical stuff. We have to promote the Ayurvedic theories. And if there is an Ayurvedic group of doctors really, uh, especially like uh, people who have studied from the universities, even you can use any kind of medicines from different countries. Because when you think about the European uh, traditional medicines or in Germany, the herbal medicines, we have a lot of plants which are also uh, pollution free and different things. But the only thing is the theory is missing because people wants to export different kind of uh, kashayams and additions and all. It is always restricted in Germany. So that is one of the, so we have to promote the technical and theoretical knowledge to the Western public. That's what one of my humble suggestion. And for this, what we can do is uh, the India government or Indian different universities has to collaborate with the different universities of uh, Germany because we have LMU, uh, Ludwig Maximilian University in Munich and Humboldt. Several universities are there where they are teaching also Indology. But why don't we have a Ayurveda studies, at least for the local people and to get a, a practical experience from India. So in both ways, it will be benefited. Also the students, also the monetary benefits for India. So such things can be done a lot. But nowadays, like Dr. Patma Surabhanyam has told, that uh, the seriousness of the Ayurveda is less in uh, Germany and all. People are doing whatever they want. So this should be really restricted. There should be quality control. And like the Indic University and all should come forward to help us. And also I want to tell one more thing that tomorrow we are launching the first Ayurveda Doctors Association in Germany. So this is uh, one of the first kind in Europe that uh, Indian Ayurveda doctors made an association because we always, even Ayurveda is uh, getting popular, always the Indian group of doctors are always outcasted. So you can see that Ayurveda is promoting, Ayurveda is coming up and all, but in another way, it is always uh, outcasted this one. So we are also making a, an association tomorrow and uh, one more thing what I want to tell you is in June 2020, two, three months before, because Germany has made a law in the German government that as a definition for Ayurveda. 
because even we have 5000 years of old medicines and we talk so many spiritual things and everything that's okay and we talk about uh, we sing about lokas and everything samadosha samatnicha samadatu all these things but for a modern human being what is the definition of ayurveda even india has not given a definition of ayurveda even india has not given as a national system of medicine for ayurveda but germany has in 3 months before they put a definition that it is a medical system and that should be practiced by the modern medical doctors here modern medical doctors means the german medical doctors even the ayurveda doctors are far away from this but even that that doesn't matter but at least there is a definition given to ayurveda so we need a scientific definition and we need a Uh, quality control for ayurveda in all over the world and uh, my some humble suggestion is there are a lot of young generations of ayurveda coming up again in india what they have they have no future at all so if i got a little bit future here in germany because of the fight but most of the people doesn't want to do this fight so we have to put some kind of uh, uh, what you call Uh, openings to the new generations this is what my humble suggestion thank you thank you sir so starting with the discussion so uh, i think uh, dr ram kumar ji is also joined us uh, sir uh, can you hear me dr ram kumar ji so uh, so moving ahead uh, so i would like to also seek uh, Uh, the views of uh, dr sandris uh, we know that in latvia somehow ayurveda is a little regulated in terms of a, a methodology of a therapy or as a technical uh, know how uh, so could you share few thoughts about uh, how do you perceive uh, ayurveda from a perspective of uh, uh, validity or relevance in uh, modern uh, healthcare system unmute yourself doctor thank you do you hear me uh, first of all i want to thank you for inviting me here and also i want to thank you dr somit kumar about the knowledge I get from your lectures and, and, and our meetings, and also uh, University of Latvia was involved in this. And, and on, 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 on basis so on this university, uh, the program was made, and I was also able to attend it and uh, get the uh, <coughs> uh, the knowledge from the uh, prime source uh, from the Indian uh, doctor. <laughs> and uh, uh i see that the ayurveda uh, i like it because i'm an orthopedic surgeon so the surgeon likes very practical things and he likes to see results and and if he, if i look on ayurveda then also for me it looks uh, logical system and also it's pretty clear uh, and then uh, you can you know, if you know the basics then you can understand how it how it works and uh, <clears throat> uh, if we speak about the the uh, place in the medicine then uh, i can speak about my personal experience and uh, uh, i do it gives uh, i'll say holistic way of the uh, how we how we see the patient and how we see the disease because nowadays if we if we speak about the western medicine or allopathic medicine then we go more and more divided we we go for uh, um, more specialization like in my field not only orthopedic surgeon now we speak about the like a uh, hand surgeon now even more divided so i see that it's it's uh, needed that we have to also think 
a little bit back, like in in in, in a previous time that we see a patient as a whole, and this could be a a good way how to. Uh, uh, the Ayurvedic perspective could be a good way how to uh, teach uh, uh, the medical uh, people how to look on the on the on the patient. And there is still uh, like a gaps and, and, and places which is not covered by the this uh, Western medicine or allopathic medicine. And uh, I see that the future is that we can collaborate together. As we say here now, more and more we speak about the co uh, complementary medicine. So it involves not only uh, this allopathic medicine, but also could be Ayurveda, could be homeopathy, and uh, could be other systems which could help uh, to uh, cure the patients and... and uh, to decrease the suffering of the of the people. Yes, maybe some more questions. Yeah, yeah. so I think I will also uh, have an introductory remark from Margaret, uh, she being herself a doctor. Uh, what, what attracted you to, uh, in terms of uh, looking at Ayurveda as an option for you as a clinician uh, what are the gaps you feel uh, exist uh, which you would like to uh, bridge with the knowledge of Ayurveda in modern medicine? First of all, my humble pronoun to the divine soul of Krishna Kumarji. And uh, without him, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't be the, the person that I am today in Ayurveda. So first of all, I'd like to pay my tribute tribute to him and also to thank the AVP family. And uh, I would like to make a, a small correction. I'm not a doctor, I am a na naturopath and Ayurveda therapist. Um, I think that um, it's very important to have Ayurveda in South America and in Brazil because in the whole, in the whole Latin America actually, we have different uh, um, um, original uh, people, like uh, with their original uh, system of medicine. And it makes a very beautiful uh, dialogue with Ayurveda because it's uh, when we analyze what our indigenous people do in Latin America, not only in Brazil, in the whole Latin America, it's very similar to, to Ayurveda, using a different language, but the, a very similar approach to Ayurveda. And here in Brazil, we have something that it's very unique. We have a public system of health uh, and in this public system of health, in 2000, from 2016 to 2019, we had the government approving uh, in integrative and complementary um, medicine in our health, uh, public health system. And in 2018, 2017, sorry, Ayurveda became part of it. So that means that there is a policy in Brazil from the government that Ayurveda can be in the public health system. But we don't have, uh, we have about 3,000 uh, Ayurveda therapists in Brazil, but Brazil is a huge country. We are more than 200 million people. And these 3,000 uh, Ayurveda therapists have been studied uh, only here or have studied, some have been to India to study in different institutions. And I'd like to make also um, a remark here between the difference that we see in the therapists that have studied with, with AVP and other therapists that have studied in other uh, institutions in India. Um, we see that people that have studied with AVP have much deeper knowledge and much more committed to, to Ayurveda, to, to practice and to spread Ayurveda as a, um, the way it should be, like uh, as we studied in um, in AVP and in India, and we have um, um, the government now, Ayush government. Yesterday, I was in a meeting with the the uh, consul general uh, from India here in São Paulo, and he was telling us the news about the Ayush government making some um, MOU with some important university in Brazil. 
uh, one important, all are public universities. One uh, public university from Rio, that's the Federal University, and then two universities from Sao Paulo uh, with the medical schools in all these universities. So we are having uh, these uh, MOUs uh, being signed and for research on COVID and research on medicinal plants and other clinical research. So what we see is that uh, Ayurveda in Brazil is getting a momentum, not only in Brazil, actually we see this in the whole world and also in, in Latin America as a whole. And it's important that we go forward in the right, the right direction because this momentum that we are getting is in, important, but uh, if we go in the right direction with Ayurveda here in Brazil, I think we can, can do a lot for the population. And as Ayurveda being uh, allowed by the government, not, not allowed to be practiced, um, because Ayurveda is not um, uh, recognized in, in Brazil yet by the government, but it's allowed to practice in the public hospitals and in, in, in the public clinics. So we have this uh, very beautiful moment for Ayurveda in Brazil. And uh, I, I think that we need more than ever the guidance of the dividers from, from India, the guidance from the institutions from India, uh, and the guidance from IU so that we can move in the right direction. And the reason why I, I was attracted to Ayurveda is because I myself, from my, from my family side, I'm descendant from uh, indigenous people. So I grew up uh, being treated, me and my brothers, everyone in the family, with plants, something very similar to what we, we do in Ayurveda. So when I got in contact with Ayurveda, it was something that was very uh, natural for me. That's what I, I lived as a child, as a teenager, in my own house, in my own family. So I think that Ayurveda makes a lot of sense here in Brazil. And as uh, Dr. Jivan was saying, we have to, to be very careful the, the way that uh, we, we move and to, to be very responsible to the Ayurveda that we, that we practice. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, Thank so you uh, we, we, we really see that across the globe, there are local head traditions, uh, uh, whether documented or undocumented, uh, taking care of uh, primary healthcare needs across the world. In fact, uh, that's a, a very important concept in health where health has to become more localized rather than just a global uh, entity uh, as a common uh, standard. So I do uh, really appreciate that you had such a root, uh, already existing uh, culture or a, such a tradition in Brazil. I would also like to uh, uh, invite Dr. Uh, so, uh, sorry, Professor Eric to uh, basically highlight what makes him uh, always uh, be very enthusiastically involved in propagating the more holistic perspective of Ayurveda uh, in your journey uh, for last several years, or right, rather than, than we know that a decade now. Uh, what makes you go uh, each day and uh, live uh, for the Ayurveda? Hello, everyone. Uh, good evening. My pronouns to Krishna Kumarji and the Holy Organization for this conference. I'm very happy to stay here and see many friends from India. Uh, in this very complicated moment in the world, you no, know? and very happy to stay here. Well, I think the uh, in my no, in my experience, Margaret talked for many points very important to Brazil. I not repeat, but it's the same points, in special to increase in Brazil the last uh, ten years so much to many schools of Ayurveda student directed to original people from Brazil. This is very important to, to, to increase Ayurveda in Brazil. But um, the more difficult having Brazil, I think so, this, uh, this influence to Ayurveda uh, come to Brazil. Ayurveda come to Brazil principal and have the influence to yoga. Yoga influence is very important at the moment to Ayurveda come to Brazil. And have one second point, a very important talk to this. This uh, Not everyone, but 
many people beginning study Ayurveda is not from the classics, is not from direct to Charaka, Sushruta, Ashtanga Hridaya and different books, but direct from the very uh, simple books from US in the principle. And the, what's happened to Brazil principle for the next uh, last 10 years, 15 years, and more difficult, this is breeds. This breed to Brazil, to India, uh, and the people understand the, 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 the traditional heavy Ayurveda. And the, it's not Ayurveda, it's not only one medicine, it's heavy much more. This is, I think, for my, my experience, it's more difficult to people understand. Ayurveda is one big traditional, it's the one big knowledge, it's, uh, it's very v heavy, it's so bigger. Ayurveda is not only one medicine. I, I think this is more difficult to have uh, this, this, this bridge to Bra now in Brazil to India. So you have been also uh, integrating a lot of uh, what we say, Andhravya Chikitsa, uh, the mm -hmm. components of spirituality, yagya, all those things. What, yeah. what uh, inspired you to do that? Ah, my, my family. Only my family, my mother, principal, my mother. My mother beginning studying yoga in 71, 71, 7, 71, so many, many, many years ago. In 94, my, my, my mother founded the Naradeva Chala Institute 25 years ago. And I have the principal for me, for my family. And my mother loved India for many years and constructed this institute. Now in the institute, I have every have many things. Now have uh, Hasta Hasta Samudrika, Jyotisha, Pujas, Ayurveda, Yoga, etc. But this is very difficult that people understand this. Everything this is only one. Ayurveda is only one point. This I think this is more important, more difficult that people understand in Brazil. Not Ayurveda is not alone. Ayurveda need you to to Sanskrit. Ayurveda need to Jyotish. Ayurveda need to yoga. But yoga need Ayurveda. Yoga need Jyotish. Every only this 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 these margas, no, these pathways need you so much for different pathways for live for uh, have the exist existence. I understand much my 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 work in the, my family work is much more for this way. No, much more for uh, deep knowledge, uh, uh, traditional knowledge. I, I know this is very important to Ayurveda in the, in the third, uh, to allopathic way or the scientific way. This, everything, this is very important. I know this, but my, my heart is staying the traditional way. This for me is much more important for my, my, my work. I think it's very important. Having many works in the world, having many people, but for me, this is very important. I understand. So, of course, uh, so we really appreciate that uh, Ayurveda is just beyond medical science. So it's very holistic as well as multidisciplinary in terms of even uh, we have in Indian, there are so many shastras, interdisciplinary yeah. knowledge system, which we have to integrate. So with this purview, I just want to again uh, go to Dr. Lucia. Uh, Dr. Lucia is again a very a uh, long history of association with uh, our institutions and being a neurologist still, uh, what uh, drives you and what do you see Ayurveda as a unique science? What do you see in Ayurveda as a unique uh, science which uh, makes you to feel integrate with your uh, modern uh, knowledge system? Can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Pregunta Lucía te preguntaba el doctor qué es lo que qué es de la Ayurveda lo que te hace verla como conocimiento único y su relación con con la medicina moderna con la medicina alopática. No te, no te escuché la, la primera parte. ¿Qué es lo que? ¿Qué es lo que para ti hace que la Ayurveda sea algo único y su relación con la medicina alopática? Bueno, eh, para mí la Ayurveda eh, fundamentalmente me, 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 
me atrapó, me enamoró por esta visión global del ser y eh, mostrar el, el origen eh, del universo todo y al ser dentro de, de ese origen, de ese universo. So the, the things that captured me uh, in, in terms of Ayurveda was mainly uh, the uh, holistic or integrative uh, view that has on the human being or on the being itself and its close relationship with the origin of the universe itself as well. Y luego de haberme formado en una universidad donde todo está dividido, separado, fraccionado, con una mirada desde la enfermedad y no desde eh, la salud y la felicidad, donde la felicidad no existe ni siquiera en el diagnóstico, eh, en la Ayurveda me mostró plenamente cómo, como médica, podía introducirme en la, eh, en la causa de la enfermedad y ser una guía mucho más eh, eficiente en, en ese camino para que, la, para que podamos, en primer lugar, personalmente, atravesados por la Ayurveda, y en segundo lugar, como trabajadores de la salud, una guía para nuestros consultantes. So, uh, coming from, uh, from a university or with a training uh, mainly biological, uh, which only divides the human being in separate parts or in separate systems. So, having that and, and only focusing always on disease and not on health and being faced with the fact that Ayurveda uh, uh, takes in its concept of health, uh, the terms of health and happiness, uh, even uh, as, as part of the making a diagnosis, uh, of making a diagnosis, sorry, all those things that uh, the allopathic medicine has never taken into account. Uh, so it showed me, gave me the tools uh, for me to integrate that knowledge and also to be, uh, give me the tools to introduce myself as a guide to, the, to my patients, not only from an integrative and holistic uh, way, but also as, as, a, as a health carer. Si hay algo que me acompaña permanentemente y uno de los eslocas que más amo es la gadiroga, ¿no? La gadiroga, algo que desde la medicina moderna no se tiene en cuenta para nada. And the basic concept that is always with me is la gadiroga, which is a concept that in medicine, in modern medicine, is not taken into account at all. Y si algo me apasionó también fue ver que cuando escuché a los profesores decir las, las enfermedades son tantas que no se pueden nombrar. Y no precisamos ese nombre para poder abordar la recuperación del equilibrio. Si encontramos las causas del desequilibrio vamos a poder recuperar la salud de la persona. Y esto y el poder identificar un desequilibrio mucho antes que la persona misma se dé cuenta que está desequilibrado fueron también las eh, cuestiones de la Ayurveda que me apasionaron. And other aspects of Ayurveda that really caught me as well were the fact that this this uh, uh, concept of saying that there are so many diseases that we cannot name them name them name them all, but it's not necessary to know their name in order to get to the cause of that disease. And it's only by knowing the cause of the disease that we will be able to uh, help a person to, to recover her, uh, their state of well. So that concept is what gave me, gave, gave me as well, uh, really hit me in order to, to be a follower of Ayurveda. Y creo que si hoy el éxito que tenemos en una amplia población de médicos aquí en la, en la Facultad de Ciencias Médicas de Rosario y hoy con la diplomatura en 
28 países hemos atraído la atención de médicos y, y, y terapeutas y trabajadores de la salud fue precisamente por hablar de esta esencia de la Ayurveda. El buscar la causa, el buscar esos signos simples que nos muestran el desequilibrio y entender que solo podemos ser guías, que el estado y la decisión de salud y enfermedad es una decisión de cada uno en un compromiso cotidiano en la elección de cada día. And I think that the success that we are having nowadays in our promotion with, uh, of Ayurveda with the amount of, um, of uh, medical doctors who are interested in studying Ayurveda and also in the uh, online courses that we are delivering with uh, attendees from 28 Uh, countries, including doctors and, and therapists and, and people from different uh, so-called alternative uh, therapies, uh, the thing that they all have in common is uh, precisely the, when they share this concept of looking for the cause of a disease and for the signs that can predict a, a disease long before the allopathic medicine does, and on the one hand, And on the other hand, that um, as, as Ayurvedic doctors, we, can be, we cannot be other thing but guides to those persons who come to us, because in the end, our health is also a, a decision that we take on ourselves. It's also our responsibility. Thank you. So uh, we have uh, Dr. Ram Kumarji now with us. Uh, so I would... Uh, request Ram Kumarji to elaborate on his vision of globalizing Ayurveda and what drives him every minute, every second uh, to take the message of Ayurveda to the world. Namaste to everybody. Uh, I must first apologize for being a little late. Uh, but yes, uh, I think This is a beautiful start to a month-long festival that is proposed on this platform. Um, and I think every weekend we are going to be having sessions relating to different aspects of understanding Ayurveda. This particular session is titled The Winds of Change or Parivartya. And the big question to all of us is whether this change is in the right direction or the wrong direction. Especially today in COVID times when in India for the initial period of COVID, Ayurveda was completely neglected. In fact, in Kerala, the Ayurveda doctors and hospitals were specifically told not to treat COVID patients. I'm talking about six to eight months back. And even very recently, when the COVID treatment protocol released by the government of India included some Ayush products and protocols, it was strongly objected to by the Western medical system practitioners. So there's a huge challenge wherein Ayurveda is certainly becoming more popular in India and globally. But on the other side, There is a scientific community that keeps demanding evidence and keeps pushing Ayurveda and other traditional systems to the sidelines. And this is most evident in COVID times when there is no medical system that has actually come up with a clear treatment protocol based on evidence until recently, and even now, it, it is still debatable. 
and still there is this great reluctance to use a system like ayurveda to use the protocols of ayurveda to use the herbs in ayurveda to cure to heal to support to prevent a condition like covid-19 so there is this big conflict that is happening in india and i am sure it is also happening in many parts of the world in fact very recently in another country a graduate ayurveda practitioner from india has been barred from practicing for the last 2 months because one of his patients who was doing well was had been given a medicine which contained less than 1% of lead in that medicine and for exclusively that reason this practitioner this experienced ayurveda doctor from india has not been able to practice for the last 2 months so there is a huge challenge in front of us there is also this big challenge of what is the kind of ayurveda we would like to promote globally there is one group who desires a purely medical clinical ayurveda to be promoted globally there is another group who would like to see primarily the mental emotional part of ayurveda to be promoted globally and a third group who is only interested in the spiritual part of ayurveda and then there is a fourth group who wants to combine the physical the mental the spiritual the socio cultural aspects bring everything into the promotion of ayurveda globally so what is that ayurveda that we really want to promote and is there a possibility that within the global ayurveda community we can come to a consensus on where we want to take ayurveda there is also another question in front of us i briefly heard dr jeevan earlier before i got disconnected there are two resource bases one is the material resource base and the other is the knowledge resource base the material resource base is primarily to do with the herbs in ayurveda and the knowledge resource base is to do with the entire wisdom that ayurveda presents to all of us the conversation in the last 2 3 decades has primarily been around how to protect and promote the material resource base how to take the material resource base to all parts of the world but there has been very little conversation around how to protect and promote the knowledge resource base which includes the texts of ayurveda experts in ayurveda creating experts in ayurveda that conversation has been largely limited so there are many students of ayurveda there are many practitioners of ayurveda in india and across the world but if we were to look for experts in ayurveda there would only be a handful there is also a conversation around integrated medicine ayurveda and other systems primarily western medicine working together it has its merits and it has its demerits if the two systems work together on a very superficial plane like for example there was this conversation of 
Western diagnosis and Ayurveda treatment, which is a very superficial level of application of integration. Or do we look at a more sophisticated, deep integration at the level of the th the principles, where there is a dialogue between the experts on both sides and some kind of a understanding is arrived at the tattva or principle level. Because if that happens, that is more long-term, more beneficial to the Ayurveda community practicing globally. So these are all questions. And I don't think there is any one answer or any one of us have an answer to all these questions. But certainly we need to think about all these questions. We need to think about the direction in which we want to take forward Ayurveda education, Ayurveda research, Ayurveda practice, Ayurveda production of medicines, cultivation of herbs, and all other allied aspects. So these are a few thoughts I thought I, I should share with all of you and would love to hear the response from any of you regarding these thoughts. I, I know for a fact that a Dr. Jeevan has a very strong opinion about how Ayurveda should be promoted globally. I'm sure each of you have similar thoughts. And hence, I think it'll be great if we can use the time available. I'm not sure how much time we have, but to, to actually discuss these topics, some of them, I'm sure that all of us will not be in agreement regarding the solutions, but we can at least debate possible solutions. And start addressing some of these issues which will largely determine the mainstreaming of authentic Ayurveda for global health care, which was the primary vision of Krishna Kumarji. So, with these words, can we move into the question answers or the discussion part of the session or is anybody else due to speak? Somit? Uh, yeah, we have an introductory remark from all of them. So uh, please, uh, if you have some specific queries to uh, all our participants. Well, I think I've thrown out many questions and I invite any of you to begin addressing any of these questions. It'll be good if we can keep the answers short or our thoughts brief so that everybody gets a chance to speak and to respond both. So Dr. Jeevan has put his hand up. So let him start. Okay. Yeah. So it's a very... Uh, interesting uh, questions, uh, Dr. Ramkumar. But anyway, now after 25 years of living in Germany, I'm a little bit more practical person, I think. Now, even though I am an Indian, but uh, I'm a little bit practical. So my opinion is there are uh, thousands of students in Germany after Abitur. Abitur means after pre-degree, ready to study Ayurveda. But what is the facility here in Germany? Because people are interested, but uh, there is no possibility. So my uh, suggestion is uh, some of the people like you has to make an initiation through Ayush government or forget about the Ayush government directly and to connect with the, some of the universities. Even I can give you some of the universities who are interested, like LMU, uh, Ludwig Maximilian University, Humboldt University, Göttingen University. There are so many universities. Even we have a Malayalam layer school in Germany, in Heidelberg. 
so people are really interested for studying ayurveda but the teaching as you told that it is a western diagnosis and if you have a paracetamol for your fever i have a, a musta for my ayurveda so this is the way how it is going on so this should be completely restricted should be quality qualified so that means there should be a course in each country like in lativa or anywhere and that should be uh, connected with the indian colleges like uh, as you tell as you tell ram kumar if you are leading this uh, position and to get uh, practicals in india and the most of the theories are covered in other countries and if it is a 3 years or 5 years of uh, syllabus uh, then we will achieve the global uh, propagation of uh, tattva ayurveda so that is what my thank you yeah so uh, one just uh, interjection sandres if you can because he had should leave for one emergency uh, duty so sandres uh, see i uh, university of latvia has done a very unique experiment in starting a recognized accredited course in ayurveda in europe what would be as a director of orthopedic uh, hospital sir and a surgeon what do you foresee Uh, the future strategy to mainstream ayurveda education in a university doctor okay. doctor yes so and uh, uh, we already have in latvian university this uh, this pro- pro- program for ayurvedic studies so uh, i think that uh, we have to continue this and, and, and because people are responding and and, and are uh, participating in these programs um, the only problem is that uh, the people already who are uh, working a lot of very busy there maybe don't have so many time to participate in a, in a studying this material uh, and if we speak about uh, ayurveda status in our country then we already have a possibility uh, to do a, a a certification of ayurvedic method uh, who has completed uh, uh, this uh, study uh, studying and uh, also who completed the exams so we already have this first steps in our country uh, for the future development of ayurveda so just be very short is being an orthopedic surgeon what are the few areas which you feel a proper integration can happen few diseases which comes to your mind where we can start with in your specialty or other specialty what you foresee integration is possible in management of uh, these diseases in my in my specialty first what i see is uh, when we speak about the rehabilitation of our patients because uh, rehabilitation and uh, Uh, ayurveda and also uh, this so called western medicine it all can come together and and do the best for all, all patients and also maybe one field could be also to uh in uh pre surgical uh in pre surgical uh, i would say uh time when the surgery is, is maybe could be avoided or maybe when uh, the surgery is expected then we can uh, with integrative medicine elements we can uh, prepare the patient for better outcome after the surgery this is what like i see perspective in uh, in my field thank you thank you thank you yeah please dr lucia yes sir now we will um 
sabiendo las preguntas que recién hizo, quería decirle, en nuestra experiencia, estando en el seno mismo de una facultad que forma médicos de alopáticos, hemos podido vivenciar plenamente el, el trabajar minuciosamente para cambiar ese paradigma. Yo pienso que en todos los niveles podemos integrarnos, en todos los niveles. Porque fundamentalmente lo, lo que tenemos que cambiar eh, de la formación de la, de la medicina alopática es la mirada de la enfermedad por la mirada de todo el ser. Larisa, paro cuando quieras. Sí. So, what, what Dr. Lucia is saying, basically, coming from an allopathic uh, environment, she thinks, she considers that um, integration between Ayurveda and allopathic medicine can be done at, at every level, actually. Uh, because, uh, first of all, mainly, I, I had interrupted her, so she will continue, by changing, uh, contributing to change the point of view or in a disease-based uh, focus into a integral uh, based focus. Sí, sí, sí. Y, y es muy interesante trabajando con los médicos y, y todos los trabajadores de la salud cuando insistimos, insistimos, los ponemos en el reto de ver el individuo todo, no la enfermedad, la causa no los síntomas, y cuando hablamos de pancha nidana, cuando hablamos de los getu, y, y les mostramos que esto lo podemos analizar con las gunas, y lo comienzan a experimentar, realmente el trabajador de la salud mismo empieza a vivenciar todo el amplio panorama que se abre para poder ayudar a pacientes que de otra manera no lo podrían ayudar. Y entonces, el Ayurveda solo, el Ayurveda solo, cuando transmitimos su esencia, nos va abriendo el camino para difundirlo, integrarlo y realmente transformarlo en un bien para la humanidad. Ok. And Dr. Lucia is saying that it's, it's very, it's really, really interesting the phenomena that happens to uh, to students, to doctor students. I mean, doctors who have been formed or trained under the, the um, allopathic uh, umbrella. When as teachers or formers, they insist and challenge them to change their view from, um, from being um, focused on, I mean, to change their view from disease to see in a person just a disease and a diagnose into seeing a whole human being with three levels and also from seeing only the symptoms and to change that to see the causes of that symptoms. So when they do the study of Panchanidana or the causes of a disease or the causes of a symptom, they are invited to think about that in terms of gunas. And it's really, 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 and also to think in terms of gunas and also to experiment those, I mean, to try to relate that knowledge they are, they are acquiring with real life, I mean, with, with experience. So it's really, it's really uh, interesting and positive to see the change that happens within someone who is a, a health care or health, health worker. So... Dr. Lucia is, is saying again that she, um, when, when they do this, when they experience this, they can see the scope, how the scope of the help that they can provide widens. The help that they can provide to accompany a person in, in their path uh, or in their disease or, or non balance or unbalanced uh, path. So Dr. Lucia is saying that Ayurveda, uh, just by the sake of teaching Ayurveda, the way it should be taught, it opens to, uh, it opens several parts and helps to integrate it at, at different levels or at every level with uh, allopathic medicine. Pero el éxito de esto fue la guía de ustedes. Creo que esto no es posible 
sin la guía de los maestros indianos, sin la guía de ustedes. Pero que para que nosotros entendamos la esencia de la Ayurveda, y como dijo eh, el doctor antes, eh, Jiva, de, tomemos la esencia y podemos, podamos transmitirla para que se pueda aplicar en todo el mundo, necesitamos las guías de ustedes, ser nosotros sus brazos, sus mentes, su proyección para llevar el Ayurveda a todo el mundo. But above all, I mean, this phenomenon could, couldn't be possible without your guidance. In the sense that, as Dr. Shivan said before, uh, it's only by teaching Ayurveda, I mean, the essence of Ayurveda, that this can be done. So, and with your done and, and, and promoted. So with your guidance, we as doctors can be your arms, can be your voice in order to promote and, and expand this knowledge. Thank you, Dr. Go ahead, go ahead. Sorry. Continue. Por eso nuestras clases comienza con filosofía y por eso nuestras clases comienzan con lo que no es Ayurveda. Hay tanto dando vuelta por el mundo que no es Ayurveda que nosotros empezamos diciendo que no es Ayurveda. Y en esto, un ejemplo muy lindo, que este, tengo una nieta de cuatro años que un día escuchando, escuchando que alguien me llamaba porque tenía dolor, mi nieta dijo, abuela, si tiene dolor, le falta aceite en el cuerpo, que haga vianda. So that, that is why in the, in the training courses, the training courses start um, first by giving philosophy backgrounds and also what, uh, what is not Ayurveda, what Ayurveda is not. That is the way that courses are, are started because there are so many things and, and pseudo knowledge going, ar going on around that those courses are started by knowing Uh, by stating precisely what Ayurveda is not. And to conclude, a nice example from my uh, uh, granddaughter, Dr. Lucia's granddaughter, who's four years old, that she was, she overheard once that Dr. Lucia was being asked uh, because someone was having pain. So the, the, the little girl said, okay, if you have pain, you need some, some oil in your body. Go and, do, uh, go and have some abhyanga with four years. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Lucia. Uh, some very interesting insights. Um, you have all been bringing groups to India to study Ayurveda over the last several years. Muchas gracias, Lucy, recent, por... Sorry. One of the recent debates is about appropriation of Ayurveda, that the West is studying Ayurveda very differently from the five and a half year university approved Ayurveda Acharya program in India. The BAMS program in India is not what many students in the West are studying. And the question that people ask is how many of the students who come to India on the short-term courses develop the kind of knowledge and expertise that a, that a student of the five and a half year program gets? These are questions. I mean, I'm not saying this is true or that is true. I'm just putting out questions that people ask. Is a Western student of Ayurveda, or let me frame it as, have any of the students you brought to India, do you find that they have a very high level of expertise in the practice of Ayurveda after going through several short-term courses? Entonces, está preguntando Lucía, eh, te agradece primero por, por las reflexiones que, que has dado y como sabe que tú haces viajes a, a India para estudiar Ayurveda eh, y, y comparando, o sea, en, en parte comparando, por un lado lo bueno de, de, de llevar a, a 
gente a estudiar Ayurveda en India, pero cómo eh, se pregunta, ¿no? No, como, no como un desafío, pero se pregunta qué grado de, de, de profesionalismo puede tener una persona viniendo a estudiar desde el, desde, desde lo, desde el mundo occidental, digamos, eh, lo que comparativamente son breves cursos de, de, de Ayurveda en India. No, es que nosotros tenemos, tenemos un curso en, eh, avalado por, eh, por, eh, por graduados de la Facultad de Ciencias Médicas de Rosario, un curso con 40, 443 horas de cursado presencial, teórico, práctico. O sea, la gente... Hoy, in, iniciamos el viaje con, con gente diversa, pero hoy solo vamos a, a India la gente que está haciendo el curso de, de, en la Facultad de Ciencias Médicas con 443 horas. Esto es lo, el, el inicio, digamos. Estamos planteando y por más, pero hoy tenemos un curso avalado por la universidad de 443 horas. At the moment, I mean, though we started doing trips to, to India uh, to study Ayurveda for general public, at the moment, nowadays, uh, the course that we are doing in, in the University um, of Medical Sciences in Rosario, which is supported by the uh, chartered, uh, by the organization of chartered doctors, uh, is given with the, um, It's issued with five, sorry, 443 hours of, of courses of teaching. And the trips that, I, that, I, that we are doing at the moment are no longer for general public, but for those students from the medical, um, from the University of Medicine of Rosario. So that is, these are our first steps and we are going for, for more. But our idea is to give, a, I mean, what, what she is saying I, what I interpret she's saying is that the, the um, trainees are getting um, um, an integral training, both supported by the medical Western system, let's say, uh, and also with uh, trips to India. Maybe we can hear from Eric also in this regard. Professor Eric? Yes, sir. Este curso, este curso tiene tres años y ahora estamos proyectando agregarle dos años más. Nada más eso quería decir. Sorry, just to conclude, Dr. Lucía is saying that this, the, at the moment, this training course in Rosario has, uh, is a three-year course and they are planning to add other, uh, to take it to five. I mean, to add two, two extra years, but it's, it's in the, in the plan, uh, plan, planning stage so far. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, Eric. No problem. <laughs> Sir, what's the question? Sorry. So the, the question is, when students come to study Ayurveda in India over the years, do they develop the same level of expertise or even a superior level of expertise compared to a student who goes through the five and a half year BAMS program. Okay. I think this is totally different knowledge and total, totally different uh, idea to Ayurveda. Uh, Ayurveda is the, uh, in developed all of the world, include India. I believe, I believe Ayurveda never stopped to de uh, develop, no? I believe this. But the big difference in developed time is in India is a century develop and South America is the maximum uh, three or four decades. No, it's in, in Brazil in specific, all, uh, last two decades, two decades, only two decades and the courses begin is the big courses in Brazil. And I talk big courses in Brazil and maximum uh, 400 hours, the same Lucia talk. No, this is the beginning work to Ayurveda in South America. I talk so much of this in Brazil from everybody in Brazil and South America. Everybody here in South America is babies in Ayurveda. It's beginning now Ayurveda in South America. No, in India, 
develop so centers and center. I think this is the big difference. Have one big difference. But I, I, I like to put one, one point more, Dr. Aran Kumarji. Is uh, here everybody go to MVP, you know, the groups here. Lucia group, Margaret group, my group, Abra group, have many groups in South America, and Chile group go to AVP, but have a, a totally respect for only to PMS people, but have one big difference, have classes to uh, traditional vidyas come to Gurukulas and the pro, uh, teachers come to BMS. For us in Nara Devashala Institute is have one big difference in this knowledge, you know? And uh, I think this both is very important, but to Brazil and South America have one, uh, what's the name? One very, one gap, very bigger, but this gap is from time, you know? I need to wait in the time for uh, everybody in South America have this experience. Time is time. I need waiting. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Well, on the other side of the thousands of BAMS graduates in India, there is certainly a large percentage who are not experts. So that is also a fact. <laughs> um, Margaret Ji, tell us a little bit about how your film has been received in Brazil and in other countries and how it has helped promote Ayurveda globally. Okay, thank you. Uh, before talking about the film, I would like also to talk a little bit about what was being discussed here because in Brazil we have a unique situation that we don't have uh, Ayurveda doctors. What we have is um, doctors that uh, have graduated from uh, Western medicine and study Ayurveda, either here, uh, these 400 or 400 plus courses, or sometimes go to India for intensive course, like one month or 20 days, something like this. So what we have here, like I am myself, is Ayurveda therapist. But if we compare Ayurveda therapists in Brazil and Ayurveda therapists in India, it's something totally different. Because someone that's Ayurveda therapist in Brazil, it means that at least we had studied 400 hours course and we have been most of the times to India more than once. Uh, so the knowledge that we acquire is it's much more than Ayurveda therapists in, in India. And um, about the direction that I see what Ayurveda should take in Brazil, like I was telling before that we have about 3,000 uh, 3, plus Ayurveda therapists in Brazil that many of them studied only here in the schools, in Eric school, or in my school, or in Abra's school, in other schools. And sometimes they go to different parts of India to study in, in some institution there. And we see a huge difference from the people that uh, go to India and study AVP, for example, and we have classes with uh, Vaidas and with all the care in preparation of classes and all the knowledge that these Vaidas have and people that have studied in, in other institutions that perhaps is something more, uh, uh, maybe the word is more superficial. And as I told you before, that uh, we are going to have some MOU signed with the Ayush ministry and some universities here in Brazil. So let's see how it's going to, to go forward from, from the moment that we have this uh, MOU, because the discussion was exactly this, if you can have in Brazil, uh, perhaps a graduation course in Ayurveda, or like we have in, in Latvia or maybe in Germany, that's like a post-graduation course in Ayurveda in the universities. And having the doctors from India coming and staying and, and teaching us. And regarding the film, there are two, two things that um, happened. The film, um, it has the subtitles in, in Portuguese and English and in Spanish and was well received because there is no other uh, documentary about Ayurveda in the whole Latin America. This is the first and it still is the, the only documentary. And so people have some, some many people get, get some first contact with Ayurveda from the film. And in, the, in this documentary, we, in the end of it, we uh, bring this idea that what our indigenous people do, it's very similar to, uh, to Ayurveda. So, it's also important to, to acknowledge their, their traditions 
and so that we can uh, perhaps have some conversation, some dialogue between this, our traditions and Ayurveda, because uh, they are the ones here that have the knowledge of the medicinal plants. And Brazil has the biggest biodiversity in the whole planet. So we have almost 300 uh, nations, indigenous nations, with different uses of plants and with different knowledge of plants that during this time in COVID-19, many of them uh, died, many shamans unfortunately died because of COVID. And they were in the beginning taking the treatment of allopathic medicine because that's what the government was telling them to do. And when they saw that their shamans were dying, many of, of their people were dying, they, many of these nations, they decided to do what they know, to use their knowledge of the plants. And now they are recovering and now they're saving lives using their knowledge. So this was a, a huge change in the, in the situation here. In, now they don't want to accept the, the allopathic medicine because they know that it's not curing them, it's not helping them. And the knowledge that they have is the one that is, is curing them. And it's also preventing that more uh, cases of, um, of COVID in, in, in their areas. Uh, the other thing that has helped a lot here to spread Ayurveda is the uh, Latin American uh, Congress, the LA, that since 2017, we do in Brazil. The first one was in Argentina in 2016. And then from 2017, we took the mission on to, to go on with this. And in the Congress, we bring Ayurveda, but we also bring our indigenous people to talk about their experiences. And uh, last year and in 2018, there was a, a beautiful situation that we had some shamans from the Amazon, a uh, very old shaman. He was uh, 82 years old. So to have an idea, a Dr. Uh, T.S. Krishna Kumar came from South India to the conference. This shaman left the Amazon to the conference. He arrived here after three days that Dr. T.S. Krishna Kumar arrived. He took five days to get here because he had to, you know, boats and rivers and all this. So he took much longer time to come from the Amazon to Sao Paulo than Dr. T.S. Krishna Kumar from uh, South India here. And because he, he is not used to, to be in cities, he's in the forest, he got a little bit sick. And there was one situation, he didn't speak Portuguese, so there was someone translating from his language to Portuguese, and I translated to English to Dr. Krishnakumar, uh, T.S. Krishnakumar. He looked at him and he saw that he was not well. And then he asked it, uh, what happened, and he was having a cough. And then uh, Dr. T.S. Krishnakumar consulted, you know, had a consultation with this shaman, and told me, okay, you get this and this, this plant. And fortunately, all the plants that he asked us to, to get, we have it. And Dr. T.S. Krishna Kumar made this medicine for the shaman and he became well for the rest of the conference. So that was very beautiful to see the, an Indian treating an, an indigenous shaman. So that, uh, that was amazing. So uh, I think that it's important for us here to have this kind of events also, to have conferences, to have symposiums, to have congresses and uh, to have uh, uh, a way of reaching more people. And the other thing that I'd like to, to say about a, a characteristic of um, Ayurveda here in Brazil, like Eric was saying, Ayurveda in Brazil is, we say that we, we didn't start walking yet, we're really babies. Uh, Ayurveda in Brazil started in the 80s with uh, Maharish Mahesh Yogi, that uh, some of his doctors brought it here. And all in these three decades, a little bit more going to four decades of Ayurveda. We have different uh, teachers coming and going. And from my perception, I, I feel I, I had told this to, I had the opportunity to tell this to Krishna Kumarji this year when I met him in February, that we had a quantum leap in Ayurveda in Brazil. That's my perception. When we started studying with AVP, that made a huge difference. And we feel that the students that go to AVP, they're much more committed, that they f there is a transformation that happened with us. It's not just the knowledge, it's not the theory, it's not the technical part of it. There is a transformation journey that we go through when we have this kind of uh, classes, this kind of uh, interaction, this kind of experience that we go through in India. 
And we see that people are much more committed and they're much more committed to take IVED ahead in, in, in the proper way. And one thing that we're doing in, in the school here that I think is very important, uh, one characteristic of IVED in Brazil, unfortunately, is that uh, is expensive. Not everyone, it's not for everyone IVED in Brazil yet. So what we started doing here in the school is that IVED should be for everyone like it's, it is in India. So we are supposed to start this semester uh, like uh, um, ambulatory, free of cost for anyone, but because of COVID, we had to postpone for the next semester. And that's something that we're going to, to go on. That's like a mission that in the school we took in the name of Krishna Kumaraji, that we are going to practice Ayurveda here that's inclusive, it's for everyone. It's for people that have money, but especially for those who cannot afford and that's what we should uh, do as um, uh, also in respect for Ayurveda. That, um, and I remember something that Krishna Kumarji said, Ayurveda is not a profession, Ayurveda is a mission. So that's how I feel. Ayurveda should be our mission, not our profession. Because when we take Ayurveda as a mission, the whole thing changes. The way we're going to, 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 to work is totally different because then we work from our souls, from our heart, and we are there for the people. So uh, I'd like very much to thank the organizers for the opportunity here and uh, thank all the, the panelists here for sharing the knowledge and experiences. And thank you very, very much for uh, guiding us. And as I said, when we had a Shradanjali ceremony that I participated Yeah, Margaret, in I'm sorry to interject. Uh, we have a message from Ramkumar, uh, uh, from Australia also. Uh, sir, if you all agree, can we play and then we can go to uh, the next uh, kind of part of Q&A and other discussion, if you okay, allow, thank you. sir. So, uh, Aparna ji, can we yeah. play uh, from... Yes, yes, yes. Hi, my name is Rama Prasad. Um, thanks for inviting me to be here. And it's, it's, a, it's great to be here with you. Hopefully I can add some value to your uh, time. I want to present uh, this in four segments and I'm going to divide them into legals, issues, resources and opportunity and I'm going to put them into 10 major points um, so keep it simple uh, legals Ayurveda is partially accepted in Australia and New Zealand um, compared to many other countries that's a big plus um, I'll talk about the how to start a clinic in Australia in a minute so it is partially accepted there are government accept, accepted or accredited advanced certificate Ayurveda courses. Graduates can use the Ayurvedic part of um, the lifestyle part of Ayurveda, single herbs and uh, several therapies. Second point, while Chinese medicine is fully covered by Australian universal health care called Medicare for permanent residents and citizens, Ayurveda is not. This is where Indian government can do some real magic. There are over 700, 700 Ayurveda listings on practitioner websites like naturaltherapypages.com.au. Many of those practitioners are only using just Rufala or sesame seed oil in their practice. There are about 100 Ayurveda practitioners. I think 70 of them are practicing other 30 not. Uh, so 100 uh, Ayurveda practitioners with BAMS or MD and around 200 advanced certificate graduates um, in Ayurveda as well. Most of them practice full time, um, you know, these 70 plus 200 um, or full time or part time uh, at their own home or in a rented clinic. Next point is, fifth point is, there are strict rules about how to advertise and describe what you do with your Ayurvedic services. If one says, I can treat arthritis, it might be seen as a, an unproven claim that warrants a disciplinary action. 
so we need to be uh, we need to know what to say and there are ways to do that the next topic is issues one striking issue that i've come come across is that most ayurveda professionals from india are not trained to communicate um really well they don't have the right vocabulary to convey these amazing ayurveda ideas if we can sort this out ayurveda could be even more wide reaching most locals are open to ayurveda but they need to know what it is how does it work and what is it involved and why are you advising certain things to do to be done at certain times as many ayurveda practitioners fail in this area they mostly end up working with their local indian community which is fine the third um topic is resources there are around 1700 herbs growing ayurvedic herbs growing in here that are native to australia there's a huge opportunity waiting for us for someone tested and safe products are imported to into australia as well some are manufactured here by the local herbal industries this uh, imported ayurvedic products um could be around 400 of them both single and traditional recipes some are modified um traditional recipes um so they're all available um mostly from india some from sri lanka some from england and america and the last topic is opportunity ayurveda can have a huge role in public health support here um around the world especially around the world uh just in the fields of movement daily routine and nutrition movement means you know exercise postures breathing and so on daily routine means you know, get up what to do when to have breakfast when to have a lunch meal how to eat how to drink and so on and nutrition it's applicable to everyone because around the world people are eating plastic uh covered food with um you know that are heavily processed added with colors um flavor enhancers um preservatives and so on heavily salted highly sugared and um, bad oils in them as well so even if someone eats the healthy say mushroom or broccoli it's mixed with all these additives which um uh, actually is the opposite of what we want to um provide um so when we start with you know working with movements daily routine and nutrition just those three areas um you will see everyone is a client we can make uh, bring up huge improvements with simple um suggestions there was one uh, client i remember a few years back she was on um three or four different um um energy uh, supplements in um chinese ginseng korean ginseng american ginseng and indian ginseng which is indian ginseng is ashwagandha and the energy was low, low. um when i went through the uh, case i realized that she's going to bed at 3 a.m. um because all the amazing tv programs are between 9 pm and 3 am so when i explained the uh, the the role of sleep on sleeping on time she said i'll try that a week later she calls me saying oh so my prescription was this uh, she was using foxtel iq1 which can uh, which is like a channel um I asked her to uh, upgrade it to IQ2 so that she could record um all her favorite programs from 9 until 3 uh two two channels so 9 until 3 so 6 hours of recording so 12 hours of recording in fact so that she can watch it when she wakes up at 6 o'clock and she tried it it only took one week before she said I'm back to normal 100% you know and she was a herbal practitioner 
herbal medicine practitioner. So many people don't know the you know, importance of simple things such as brushing teeth and scraping tongue and going to bed at 10 o'clock, 10 p.m. So everyone can be a client. And the 10th point is, it's easy to set up an IVL practice in Australia or New Zealand. Once you arrive here, it only takes a few days, not even a week, um, provided you can communicate well, you're confident in dealing with the locals. Most dental practitioners do some study um, at a local education center uh, or a community college. Um, and other practitioners um, uh, or work with other practitioners to gain mastery over communication and culture. It's really important to understand the local culture because language is the skin of the culture. So when you try to learn language, you will learn culture. When you learn culture, you learn language. So it's important to get their, you know, the humor and um, you know, the way they use certain words, etc. Um, we also need a first aid certificate, a membership with a suitable practitioner association, and a professional indemnity insurance. And they all can be done just over a week or a few days. And the last bit is, as I mentioned earlier, most products are available that we need to use uh, in the clinic with our local suppliers. You can also import your own favorite products uh, following the importation rules, but you know, importing, exporting people know what they are. So that's all um, I want to say about how things are going around Australia and New Zealand. Hope it is uh, beneficial for you. Um, thank you for inviting me once again. Yes, sir. Uh, Ram Kumar, sir. So that was Dr. Rama Prasad from Australia. He, again, is a student of the Coimbatore Raiveda College and has been practicing in Australia for the last, for more than two decades now. As we near the end of this session, um, I think one definite change that I see, and probably Dr. Jeevan sees and others who have gone from India two and a half decades back to the West have seen, is two and a half decades back, Ayurveda in the West revolved around three to four words. Prakriti, Nadi Pariksha, Panchakarma, Doshas, etc. That is all. And of course, turmeric and me. This is what constituted Ayurveda mostly 25 years back. 25 years later, I think there is definitely a much deeper appreciation of Ayurveda. And also, many students in the West who have come to India to study Ayurveda actually apply it in their own lives probably much better than many of the Ayurveda practitioners in India. I think this is a significant difference. Um, Dr. Jeevan, any comments, any remarks on this? Yeah, there is nothing else to say. Because, uh, one thing is there is a real, real interest here, and the people are really dedicated because uh, because what we say from India is uh, we do the analytical research for showing our plants its um, alkaloids and all because we are fed up with these things because we need a pure Ayurvedic knowledge. And that's what the West is interested. But still again, the India is not ready. India has not done the complete homework. So I want to say that the 
the future generations even in the studies should be like we have done in our gurukula system from krishnagomarjis that should be again uh, re implemented or else uh, after 50 years this will be some neem capsules and uh, ashwagandha capsules and things like this it only increase the pharmacopoeia of the modern medicine not for ayurveda so that is what uh, my uh, humble suggestion thank you um, dr jeevan um, i think i should share with all of you at this point that in the last months of krishna kumar ji he has worked extensively on restarting the gurukula system of education and has also initiated the process for establishing a university dedicated to studying ayurveda and allied knowledge systems in the classical mode so as to create real experts in the field whether from india or from the west or from anywhere people who are completely committed to applying ayurveda in its truest sense for global well being this was started by krishna kumar ji and we are definitely looking forward to completing or taking this vision forward and actually making it a reality i think we are now out of time so from my side i thank all the panelists um there is still a lot more that we can discuss there are still many unanswered questions but on the whole it is certainly an optimistic scenario for all aspects relating to ayurveda practice education research um cultivation production anything that will enable ayurveda to be practiced well in the interest of global health care thank you once again over to dr somit yeah uh, aparna you can now thank you so much dr ram kumar dr somit and everybody who joined us today as speakers from three separate far and wide continents across the oceans and to all the participants as well uh, i wouldn't take very long but i just like to announce the upcoming sessions so we'll have our next uh, two sessions uh, on the 21st uh, that would be itihasa saga of ayurveda where we'll trace the history of ayurveda and prasarana which would be global footprints of ayurveda something very similar to what we heard today as well uh, we hope to have you with us and in the memory of dr krishna kumar and uh, vijay kumar uncle uh, we just hope that ayurveda reaches as far and wide as possible so that everybody can benefit from it It's truly a life of gift of life for all of us thank you so much we hope to see you again uh, we wish to everyone a very happy diwali yes. and uh, we will just end with a shanti mantra Vasha would you be playing the shanti Pishajam sadhu vrittanam Bhadrama gamashalinam स्वभ्यस्त कर्मण भद्र भद्र 
ഭദ്രാഭിലാഷിണമദ പൂർണമിത പൂർണാത്പൂർണമുദ്യത പൂർണ്യ പൂർണമാദായ പൂർണമേവശിഷ്യത്തെ ശാന്തി 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 ഓം ശ്രീ ഗുരുഭ്യോ നമഃ ഹരി ഓം Thank you so much. Namaste. Thank you.